Hey guys, uh, we're here for our next session, uh, Staking for Dummies, everything you need to know on the basics basics of staking. And we have JK, uh, Strategy and Operations from Stakefish, and I'll let him take it from here. But before he starts, uh, let's confirm you can actually hear him. Uh, JK, do you mind saying something? And Yeah, you guys hello everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, can you guys hear me? Awesome. All right. Um, so yeah, before um, I begin, uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, thank Sinju for uh, putting together this wonderful conference. Um, uh, I've attended the first one that she has put together. Oh, well, and a huge thank you to all the people that have helped her out as well. Uh, I've been at to her first conference and, you know, this is the second one and it's, it's pretty awesome already. Uh, but yeah, um, as uh, let me then uh, dive right into my slides here. Uh, give me one second. Awesome. All right. Uh, so today um, I wanted to uh, talk about staking as my title. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite obvious for my title here. Um, but I wanted to uh, primarily focus on uh, the real basics of staking. Uh, and I wanted to first go dive into a little bit about the reason why I've put together such, uh, such a presentation um, before I dive into some of the materials. Um, some of you have might have already seen uh, these uh, headlines pop up, uh, but you could see sort of uh, you know see uh, networks like Celo, Polkadot, Solana coming on headlines, including Ethereum 2.0, which will use proof of stake. Uh, so there's a lot of interest around proof of stake and the blockchain ecosystem, um, and uh, there have been multiple talks uh, provided around proof of stake. Um, even uh, you know this uh, this own conference, the first of its. Uh, the, uh, the one prior to this conference was actually all about proof of stake. Um, and so I assume that uh, a lot of people would understand proof of stake pretty well at this point. Uh, and I've tried engaging some of my uh, crypto native friends and some of the DeFi enthusiasts uh, on what they thought about staking and what they wanted to learn more about uh, staking. Uh, well, I was very surprised to learn that um, not a lot of them still understood how staking worked, um, how they could stake, um, where they could get more information, and what they should research. Uh, and so I've come to the conclusion and I've realized that uh, most of the talks that we've, I've been giving and uh, some of our industry peers have been giving have been too focused on the validator's perspective, the proof of stake perspective from the developer's perspective who are actually creating these blockchains. Um, so I wanted to take a step back. Uh, and walk you through about on how I approach uh, to learn staking on new networks. Um, uh, for di this presentation, I'll be fo primarily focused on Cosmos and Tezos and provide you with uh, some tools that I've used to learn more about how staking works on each of these networks. Uh, and my hopes are that uh, given, given these, uh, this framework that you as potential stakers uh, will be able to use this knowledge, uh, this framework, to further analyze future proof of stake networks and uh, engage in staking yourself. So uh, I won't uh, dive too deep into uh, proof of stake, uh, but very roughly, uh, what is staking? Uh, as you all know, proof of work was used uh, uh, prior, uh, in Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, but it's very extremely energy, energy uh, intensive. Um, uh, the recent uh, stats uh, tells us that uh, Bitcoin accounts for 0.37% of the entire world's electricity cons consumption, which is a significant amount. So uh, there was an alternative uh, energy efficient approach, uh, proof of stake, uh, that was developed. Uh, on proof of stake, rather than using uh, computing power to determine who gets to add and verify blocks, uh, we use tokens, uh, token state, to determine who gets to add and verify blocks. Uh, and yes, I just wanted to add, uh, notably Ethereum, uh, the, uh, the second largest network, is uh, planning to migrate to proof of stake. So uh, let me walk you through the basic uh, flow of staking, how the interactions work. Uh, on the blockchain, uh, the main uh, people that are interacting with the blockchain directly, uh, the equivalent of miners in the proof of work workspace, would be validators. The validators are running infrastructure re that run the blockchain software and are verifying and um, creating new blocks to the blockchain. Um, and the probability of them adding these new blocks uh, will highly depend on how much tokens they have staked. Well, interestingly, uh, the validator does not need to acquire all the, the tokens. Uh, uh, they could get delegations uh, from other token holders. Uh, and so 
uh, you could see here from number one, um, I want uh, the first uh, key term I wanted to share was delegating, where token holders are able to um, stake their tokens uh, with a validator. Uh, they are not pro uh, giving up their ownership. Uh, this is key to note. They are just simply uh, lending out the token power, the staking power to a validator. Uh, and with the with the staked uh, tokens that are provided, the validator uses that to increase the probability of interacting further with the chain, and will receive staking rewards in uh, exchange. Uh, and uh, while the validator will keep some of the uh, staking rewards, most of it will be passed along to the uh, initial uh, delegators, uh, the token holders who have uh, staked. Um, and they uh, and of course the validator will take a, uh, take out a small fee uh, for operating the uh, the validator infrastructure. Um, and let me share some key terms on uh, around staking. Uh, and I won't go through uh, delegators and validator. I'll just go to uh, uh, validator fee. Uh, so again, uh, there is going to be a small service fee charged by validators to delegators uh, because validators are not only operating the infrastructure, they're also so, uh, you know, they're also hiring the key people to run these infrastructure, uh, and we spend a lot of time doing research and have developers working around the clock on monitor, uh, putting on monitoring systems. So, uh, therefore, in order for a validator to operate, uh, validators do need to charge a small fee. Uh, the next key term I want to sh uh, share was uh, the staking ratio, uh, which is the percent of circulating tokens on a network that are being staked. Uh, there's also something called slashing, uh, which is a penalty that is enforced on validators who have acted against the best interest of the network. Uh, and finally, another key term to remember is the lockup period. Uh, some proof of stake mechanisms will require the stake tokens to remain frozen for a period of time. Uh, and so therefore, it, once you engage in staking, you will not be able to move your tokens to another address, address and you'll need to wait for the lockup period to end. Uh, so let's just start off right away from uh, to look, look at some of the staking parameters on Cosmos and Tezos. Uh, the current staking ratio on Cosmos is 72%, with uh, the current staking ratio on Tezos being 79%. Uh, the staking reward rate uh, is 10% on Cosmos and 6% uh, on Tezos. Uh, the reward uh, frequency, so on Cosmos, uh, for every block of rewards will be distributed out to stakers. But on Tezos, um, these rewards will be distributed out every cycle, which is approximately three days. Uh, there is, of course, some slashing risk, uh, which I call risk here. Uh, on Cosmos, you could lose up to 5% if your validator uh, d uh, does something called double signing, uh, meaning basically uh, which is almost uh, the equivalent of just calling it uh, double spending. Uh, and, and on Tesos, uh, you as a staker will not lose anything, but you will lose out uh, the rewards that you should be receiving. Uh, and on Tezo, uh, Cosmos, there's a 21-day uh, lockup period, while on Tesos, there are none. Um, I, I've run through all these numbers, but you have to be wondering, like, how did I put all these numbers together? Uh, and Honestly, as long as you have this sort of uh, this snapshot of each network, uh, you could uh, confidently say you have uh, ba uh, most uh, most of the basic knowledge down regarding staking on that network. And so, I'll walk you through some of the tools uh, and processes I've used to uh, pull these numbers out, uh, and so that you would be able to replicate this on any other network. Um, so, l let me go into identifying the key resources then. Um, so uh, I've grouped these up into two large uh, uh, tools, uh, two large categories. Uh, one is, uh, say you want to directly engage in staking. Uh, what are the tools that you could use then? Uh, of course, there's wallets and web interfaces for you to directly um, stake. Uh, there's step-by-step -step guides, which you could use to learn how to interact, direct, uh, how to uh, use these wallets and web interfaces. And then there's reward trackers and dashboards to understand uh, how much you're receiving in staking rewards. Um, the next category I've grouped up is uh, just uh, tools, resources that will help you understand the staking economics on a network. Uh, there's the basic knowledge base, which will include the white paper developer documents and the code base itself. Uh, but there are also a, a more um, real-time information provider like Explorers. Uh, and uh, the, this is a recent trend, but there are also some um, some uh, teams that have built out interactive calculators uh, that abstracts away all of the knowledge base 
stakes related stuff and you could just simply move around some levers to uh, estimate out how much staking rewards you will potentially receive. So uh, let's dive in right into the first category. Um, and uh, as I walk through some of these tools, I'll be uh, just showing you real time uh, some how these uh, how these uh, tools look and uh, you know what key information that you could pull out from them. Uh, so uh, there's most of the wallets today have, um, that support proof of stake networks have staking incorporated in their applications. Um, so uh, it's not hard to find uh, to interact with them on mobile wallets. Uh, but there are also a lot of uh, widgets that let you um, stake using your hardware wallet. A good example of this is Looney on Cosmos. Uh, so let me see. Yeah, okay. It shows up here. All right. Um, so if you go into Looney, um, which is a web application to interact with the uh, Cosmos chain, uh, you could see you could um, log in with your Ledger Nano right away. Uh, I won't be uh, I won't be logging my Ledger Nano for now, but um, you could see that you could uh, you could just simply sign in using your Ledger Nano, uh, and let's see what sort of actions you could be doing on Looney. Uh, if you look at validators, um, let's search for Stakefish. You can see it will let you stake and unstake. Um, let's click on stake. Uh, once you have your ledger logged in, uh, you'll be able to uh, actually stake, sign, uh, and then uh, just uh, fully engage with staking just by having your Ledger Nano um, uh, logged in here. Uh, and more importantly, um, on Cosmos, you could uh, vote on on-chain governance, of course. Uh, and let's see if Looney lets you do that. It does. Um, there will be, a, a, these are all proposals that have passed previously, but um, if they are during the voting period, you could see that you could have clicked on the vote uh, button and you'll see a probably a similar prompt uh, letting you interact uh, vote yes or no on a governance proposal using your Ledger Nano. Uh, so that's a rough uh, explain, explanation on uh, Looney. Uh, now let's take a look on the other end um, and on Tezos. Uh, Trust Wallet is uh, one good mobile uh, wallet that uh, provides stake, um, staking right away on their uh, application. Uh, but there's also, interestingly, uh, Ledger, uh, is, as you're all aware, all aware, if you use Ledger Nano, uh, you probably have Ledger Live uh, downloaded on your uh, computer. Um, and Ledger Live actually supports uh, staking right on their application. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm just showing you uh, their explanation here, but I'll show you a video uh, in, in just a minute. So these are not the exhaustive list of wallets and web interfaces that will let allow you to interact uh, uh, that will let you stake um, there's a lot more but um, you know just try to uh, try out different ones and you'll find uh, uh, the one that like really works for you sticks with you uh, from a UI UX perspective now obviously uh, if we want to uh, now you know even if we do have these mobile wallets uh, with these web applications we might still not understand, we, you might still struggle on how to interact with them. Um, and it's pretty easy to find step-by-step uh, -step guides on uh, how to interact with them. Uh, let's start off by let, uh, looking at uh, Cosmos Station's user guide uh, for their mobile wallet. Cosmos Station is one of the mobile wallets available on Cosmos. Uh, and you'll see they have a pretty uh, comprehensive documentation of how to uh, how to interact with different uh, 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 different um, commands on their, uh, that you could uh, input on, on their wallet. Uh, but for us, what we're, in, uh, we're interested in is the delegate option. You can see it's pretty detailed. It will walk you through step by step on what you need to click in order to uh, successfully stake. They would ha let un um, explain how you could unstake, undelegate, or restake. Um, so yeah, there's there's a, a lot of these step by step guides for most of these wallets, uh, and it's really a simple Google search to find these. But let's say you're not really following the, the, uh, these um, written instructions, and you want something more interactive like a video. Uh, and you know, companies like us, what we do is create videos for people to learn how to stake right away. Uh, this is a video of staking uh, using our ledger uh, on a ledger live.
So you can see, uh, you know, not just us, but a lot of people try try our best to uh, provide. Uh, we realize it's not easy to understand how to stake, um, even when a wallet or a web interface is uh, very intuitive. Uh, that's why there's a lot of step-by-step -step guides and, uh, you know, uh, just try to find these and then uh, you should be able to then uh, successfully stake uh, with any wallet or web application. Uh, then let's move on to uh, understanding then, uh, uh, trying to look at uh, tracking uh, your staking words. Uh, so uh, these tools are primarily created by uh, validators uh, to help their delegators uh, because uh, staking words can be subject to uh, tax. Uh, and for tax purposes, you'll need a line by line uh, itemization of how you've interacted uh, with the blockchain to earn staking rewards. Uh, and as an example, on the Cosmos side, uh, Dokia, for their delegators, have a pretty nice tool to uh, for any of their delegators to uh, see. Let's just give it a minute to load. Um, yeah, to see how much reward they've received. Uh, and here's the line by line item uh, of how the delegator has interacted with this validator. So for tax related purposes, you could just print this out and then uh, report this to an accounting firm to uh, make sure your tax uh, life gets easier. Um, and um, and I just wanted to highlight also Baking Bad uh, Tezos Reward um, Dashboard, uh, which is even slightly more interactive because it lets it shows you for every cycle if the validator has provided the right amount of rewards to you. Uh, and so this is a good way to audit uh, your validator if your validator is providing the right reward amounts. So these are the three primarily categories of uh, tools that I, I try to find uh, when I'm trying to engage with a, with an, a proof of stake network. Uh, now let's go into sort of trying to understand them. Uh, starting with the knowledge base. Uh, you could go to white papers, you could search for developer documents, you could search for code bases. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, if you're not technical or if you're scared of huge paragraphs with a lot of words, these are, will not be helpful. Uh, therefore, I recommend trying to find these high-level summaries provided by some of the validators like Chorus One and Figment. Uh, and even then, even if these are too um, complicated, Feel free to ask, ask any questions uh, on the, pro on the uh, blockchain projects, Telegram group, or Twitter. Um, the people are very helpful, and they will try to help you, uh, direct you to the right resources to help you understand how the proof of stake uh, was, de um, was designed and intended to function. Um, and then to look at the real, um, real live uh, staking related parameters, uh, you could search for some of the uh, explorers. Uh, and I'd like to just uh, touch on uh, TC stats and specific, uh, specifically uh, as an example. Uh, this is a Tezos uh, explorer, uh, but interestingly what they do is they go very deeply into analyzing how well the validator has performed. Uh, you could see how much, uh, how much balance they have, uh, how, much, uh, how much people have staked uh, with us, uh, you could also see how well they've uh, we've performed. Uh, as an example here, you could see oh we've baked uh, one hundred and six percent more than uh, than we're meant to, and you could see how much more uh, how many staking rewards we've received in cycle two two seven. Um, I really recommend playing around with this tool to better understand how the performance of a validator uh, the performance of a validator. Um, um, and by the way, I'm skipping through a few of these links uh, for the purpose of time. For the purpose of time, um, I will share these slides. So please uh, feel free to click on these links to uh, further engage and learn more about these tools. Uh, and I'll go to the final um, category of tools that I want to share today, uh, which is staking reward calculators. Uh, a huge shout, shout out to stakingrewards.com, which I've tried to abstract away a lot of uh, what you would have to do manually to uh, calculate staking rewards. Uh, if you go to stakingwords.com, and as an example, if you go to Tezos, uh, go to Calculate, uh, you can see they have a default uh, parameters input and uh, sh shows you how many staking words you could receive uh, yearly. But you could play around with this uh, any time. Uh, say your baker is only four, has charged only 4%, you're staking uh, 2,000 uh, tezzies, you're compounding words. You could play around with all of these levers to uh, Gain a better understanding of how much staking, how your staking words would change, uh, depending on each parameter. Um, 
So, so these are sort of these are the tools that I try to identify for each network um, to better understand how their proof of stake works, how I can stake with them, uh, and how to uh, how to monitor their real life staking related parameters. Um, and uh, before um, I turn over, uh, I answer any qu some questions. I just wanted to discuss some of the uh, frequently asked questions that I've seen uh, from our at least uh, our community members. Um, and starting with uh, which validators uh, should you choose? Uh, and there's a lot of questions, a few questions that I've uh, outlined here that you should try to find answers to before choosing your validators. Uh, and then also there's a quick table um, where I've tried to categorize how these valid, uh, what sort of validators exist out there. Um, there's of course the exchange, uh, there's professional validators, but even amongst professional val validators, there's two large groups. Uh, there's the protocol developers and there's pure infrastructure providers. Uh, protocol developers are ones that will um, inter, uh, will be uh, devil, uh, will be focused on so, uh, select few chains. Um, an example of this is Cryptium Labs, and then infrastructure uh, pure infrastructure validators will be pretty diversified and will support different networks. And then of course there's individual validators. Uh, to give a one-liner on which sort of category you should choose uh, for your validator, uh, if you really want to go for ease, go with an exchange. If you want to really support a network. Uh, and support teams that uh, add more value to the network, go for a protocol developer. If you have different tokens across different proof of state networks, go for a pure infrastructure, uh, an infrastructure validator. And if you really value decentralization, support an individual validator. Uh, next FAQ is, should you pursue high staking reward rates? Uh, there is no golden standard for what the staking reward rate w is. But I caution against uh, always pursuing uh, networks with high staking reward rates because it could uh, put a cat. It could put downward pressure because there's a lot of tokens being released uh, on uh, on the circulate uh, uh, out on the market. Uh, and also, high staking reward rate really doesn't matter at the end of the day if the token price collapses. So there's a lot of factors to consider, and you should not just look at a network simply at uh, at the staking reward rate of a network. Um, Another frequently asked question that we get is, uh, what can uh, stakers do about slashing risks? Um, there's, uh, in my opinion, there's three large options. Uh, one is um, recognize that there is no ri uh, reward without no risk. Uh, just eat the risk and just move forward without any risk catching. Uh, another is you could get insurance on slashing, but uh, there are yet no live solutions uh, to provide uh, insurance on, on slashing just yet. Uh, but the more uh, the recommended way I, I suggest is diversifying your validator set such that if any of the validator um, gets slashed, uh, you only get slashed a portion of the uh, tokens that you have staked. Uh, and the other uh, interesting question, uh, final question that I get asked a lot is, uh, should, you, uh, should I run my own validator? Uh, and there are only two questions really to ask uh, and answer uh, for this. Um, are you experienced in running if servers? Are you an engineer, infrastructure engineer? If not, please use a validator. If yes, then uh, my next question is, are the costs of running your own validator, would that be lower than the fees you pay a validator? Uh, if not, again, use a validator. If, um, if, if yes, um, you know, why not give it a try? Uh, and other va your peer validators were, you know, we welcome you with open eyes. Just make sure you have done your uh, cost analysis correctly. Uh, and yeah, so that brings an end uh, to uh, a very uh, condensed intro uh, on uh, staking. Uh, uh, if you have, uh, from the uh, uh, delegator stakers perspective, uh, if you have any questions, of course, reach out to me on Twitter. Also, we have operated a Telegram group where we're pretty active and we try to answer a lot of questions coming from our community members. Uh, I will share these slides. There's a lot of uh, good links that I have skimmed through uh, that I feel would be very helpful for um, for you guys. Uh, and yeah, I think I sh I'm ready to take some questions. Uh, let me, all right, let me see. Um, all right. All right, uh, let me walk through some questions. 
Uh, All right. Uh, here, here's one. As a staker of Cosmos, I use Stakefish over a Cosmos station because of Stakefish higher rate. How can a Stakefish give us a higher rate? Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, it's not that uh, Stakefish is uh, of our, our validator is providing a higher staking reward than uh, other validators. It's just that we have a slightly lower, probably a lower fee. Uh, than an, another validator. Uh, the uh, the staking rewards provided by the uh, the network is always fixed. Um, uh, validators are not, other than perhaps if the validator is uh, performing uh, pretty badly, um, they will be receiving the uh, similar amount of staking rewards across uh, different validators. Um, next question is, uh, do you make money from providing staking service uh, and how? Uh, as I mentioned uh, during my um, uh, second, uh, first slide, uh, third slide, I believe, um, is um, because uh, because stakers, uh, token holders cannot st uh, will not be able to run their own infrastructure. They will need to go through validators by delegating, uh, and once they do that, uh, before the rewards are provided to the stakers right away, uh, the validators will be receiving a small fee. Uh, a small portion of the rewards that uh, user uh, token uh, holders uh, uh, will receive as staking rewards. So that's how uh, staking services um, are making money right now. Uh, another question is: Is double signing common? Um, it's it's occurred both on Cosmos and Tezos. Uh, that's all I could say. And uh, Cosmos, it's occurred. Um, it's occurred at least, uh, even before the annual anniversary of Cosmos, so uh, it's it, it happens. It's not common, but it happens. Uh, and remember, it's five percent uh, on the in the case of Cosmos, uh, five percent slashing if you double sign. Um, so if any of the big validators get slashed, that's a big big issue. Uh, and quite honestly, it's it's quite impossible to fully fully. Uh, hedge away any slashing risk. Uh, so I just caution that uh, because it's not common, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it will not happen in the future. Um, all right. Uh, and then there's, uh, let me answer this question. Why should I not just uh, stake with an exchange? Uh, which is a great question. Um, so there's two reasons uh, I could give, uh, and actually uh, I've also posted a video about this um, on our YouTube channel. Um, so one is um, because uh, you want to help decentralize the network. Uh, any of the networks that are launching now, um, decentralization is a key. Uh, and if a network is not decentralized in the long run, uh, I don't see any value occurring to that network. Uh, and so therefore, you ideally want to make sure that uh, you have a lot of independent validators and uh, that it, uh, validator power is not centralized to one exchange. The other is that exchanges will likely not be able to uh, stake um, all of the user's funds uh, because keep in mind that exchanges will need to keep a set amount of tokens in cold wallets and then also a set amount of tokens um, uh, for, uh, with, uh, for, for uh, to fulfill daily withdrawals. Uh, and so you will not be able to get the 100% uh, staking efficiency uh, by uh, staking with an exchange. Uh, so those are the two reasons. All right, I think we're done. Uh, thank you so much for the really great uh, talk. So we're going to transition to the next session now. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sinju. All right, thanks. Bye.